I, you know, was there on time, way ahead of time. Um, and then of course I brought my own booties. I brought, you know, she, she didn't even have me wear the booties, but she was like, wow, you're so prepared. And you know, we just good conversation. Just, you know, let her know what's happening that my clients were getting their, you know, their offers, you know, they were not even receiving counter offers and we we're going, you know, 30,000 about the asking price, things like that. Just try to build a little bit of rapport while you're there with them. Very cool. Very cool. Good. Good, 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 good. Do you, do you ever ask the listing agent what the seller's looking for? What's important yeah, to the seller? Absolutely. Yeah, when I book the appointment, that's the first question that I ask. Yeah, there I've always is. done that. I, you know, I overheard when I, when I first started in the industry, I heard someone, who was it that I heard? I think it was, um, Audrey, Audrey Flemings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I heard her asking the agent, you know, what is it that you do? So I used to sit by top agents and <laughs> I used to sit right next to them so I can hear what, what kind of, you know, questions they would, they would ask. So that was fun. There you go. I did that. I remember those days. Yeah, I remember those days. I went to Victor Kamenoff, who's an agent in Beverly Hills, been an agent in Beverly Hills for at the time, because this was 14 years ago, 15 years ago. At the time, he had already been in Beverly Hills for like 30 years. And the guy was making over a year. And I remember I just asked him, I said, do you mind if I just sit next to you and shadow you all day? I just want to know what someone of your production does all day. And God bless him. He was this sweet man. I mean, I, was, I haven't, haven't talked to him in years, but he was just like, yeah, sure. No problem. And I just sat there and listened to him talk to these million dollar people and try to get investors to connect. That was, that was fun times. Fun so, what, so what did you learn, Robert? What was that one thing that separates the rest from the best? Or the best from the rest? Well, the one thing, I guess if I was to say one thing for Victor is he is constantly looking on how to put a deal together. And, and what I mean by that is <clears throat> when he would, so give you an example, he had an appointment and he really, at this, when I had met him at this stage in his career, he predominantly was only doing million dollar plus properties. He <laughs> actually, he took on a $350,000 deal only because it was a favor to me. Um, I had a referral for him and I said, Hey, I got a guy that wants to buy a house only 350 and because he liked me and he's like you know what yeah sure I'll, I'll help him and but so at this point he was only doing a million dollar plus <clears throat> but what he would do is he would listing appointment and before he would even go on the appointment he was calling people that might be interested in buying it and to to so with the idea that he could go to the listing appointment with essentially a buyer in hand like, hey, I've already made some calls and I've got this person that might be interested in. They might be looking to do things, things like that. Like he was already trying to put the deal together even before going to the listing appointment. And then when he would get the listing, when he would get the listing, he was looking for every way possible to make the deal happen. So yeah, it go on the MLS. But he was calling everyone in his database. He was calling investors, um, even if it wasn't a good investment property. He would still call them because just be in his mind, just because I don't think it's a good investment and I would never lie to them, they might see it in a different way. So he would call investors and then he would ask those investors, hey, well, who else do you know that's an investor? And he eventually did. He had this big database of investors, the international stuff. He, he would do advertising variety of different ways just to try to put the deal together. And then if it was, well, I got to find a replacement property. He was just always, well, let me call this person. Let me connect you with this person. He was just constantly looking to put a deal together, which meant sometimes he had to turn away the deal 
So like, for example, if he had a, a seller that needed to find a replacement, calling other agents to see if they maybe had any pocket listings. And if they did, or if he knew that they might have, but they didn't, he, they were going to hold back on him because they want to double end the deal. He would just offer people referral uh, for a referral. Hey, look, tell you what, I got a, I have a listing. The buyer's looking for a placement property. I have pocket listings, right? People that have listings. If, if you find one, let me know. You can represent the buyer and I'll just take a 25% referral fee. And they would be like, okay. Like he was just constantly looking on ways to put a deal together. Um, and looking at the different finances and, and things along those lines, you know, because he was dealing with multi-million dollar listings at some times, some of those sellers didn't want to pay a, a percentage. So he would look at the numbers and say, all right, tell you what, I'm not going to charge you 3% or 2.5%. I'm going to charge you this flat fee, whether it sells above or below. Like he was just constantly looking on how to figure this all out. Um, or if he was trying to get more money, depending on the market and the price point, he would tell them, you know, like you could do this actually in this type of market say, look, I'm going to charge you this, but if it goes above, then I get a certain percentage of what it goes above. So, and the sellers just always liked how he was trying to, it wasn't just, Hey, here's what it is. It was all right. I'll work with you. Uh, let me figure this out. How do we put a deal together? He was just constantly on the phone, emailing, texting. He had conversations with people that you would never even think would have anything to do with a, a multi-million dollar property. But he was one of the people that told me, just because they rent doesn't mean they don't know someone that could buy it. You know, because I would be like, why do you, why, why are you texting this person who's rent a, a house, you know, for, or renting an apartment for $2,200 about buying a, a multi-million dollar home. They can't buy it. He goes, I know someone who can't. Like he was just always looking to put it, calling people, texting people, emailing people and non-investors, out-of-state people. I mean, he was just always trying to put deals together, calling agents. He was one of the people that taught me. He was the second person who really taught me how to go after account financial advisors, I mean, he was calling people that might know people. So he wasn't even calling people that knew he they could buy or sell. He was calling people that might know people, just constantly trying to put a deal together. It, he was great at it. That guy, and again, at this point in his career, when I met him, he didn't need money. I mean, he didn't need the money to live comfortably the money to do what he wanted to do because him and his partner were traveling all over the world, first class, things like that. So he needed money to do that, but he didn't need money to live comfortably. He had a beautiful home up in the Hollywood Hills that was paid off because when he bought it, he bought it at one point for when it was worth like $350,000 back in like the 80s or 80s, which was then now at that point worth 10 million, you know? So he had money, he had business, but he was just a hustler. It was pretty impressive to see. By any, by any chance, Robert, did he also have a either a finance background or did he have a lending license or anything like that? Because sometimes nope. it makes clients. I, I feel some. Maybe it's in my head, but I, I feel like sometimes they it makes it gives them a little bit of an edge. It it does sometimes. It, it does sometimes. Look for me personally, the f came from lending initially me a little bit understand and not putting deals together for buyers stuff like that on the real estate side of things uh help a little bit I have a finance background he got he got into real estate when he was really young and you know just kind of moved his way up from there but he was just a hustler he was always putting the deal together. he seems like a very, very interesting, interesting person is there anything else that you learned about him You know, uh, what was interesting about, I guess other things I could point out uh, about him that were really good. He, everybody liked him. And when I mean everybody liked him, I, I mean other agents liked him. Title people liked him. Escrow people liked him. Lenders liked him. Everybody liked him. 
And he'll, he'll tell you that that's part of his success. And we, we hear that all the time of, you know, sometimes you want to, you kind of choose the offers you accept based on the agent. Maybe you don't like them or do like them. He was one of those guys. Well, I guess maybe still is one of those guys. I haven't talked to him in years. So I say was like past tense. He's one of those guys where he always, hey, you know, if he, if he got introduced you to, if you, if you introduced him to somebody, giant smile, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, always call people by their first name, always was very pleasant to be around. I mean, again, me for, for nothing. I'd never met the guy. He just appreciated that I was a go-getter and was like, yeah, sure, kid, come on, come into my office. And, you know, he, everybody liked the guy and that really, he treated everyone. Now he was, you know, he had structure. So if you weren't doing your job, I, I'd see him get on calls and say, come on, you know, what, what do we got to do? But he was never yelling, screaming and making people feel bad or demeaning. Everyone liked the guy. And I do think there's a value in that and, you know, be just treating people with respect being very pleasant to people. You know, I understand it's a stressful situation in real estate. You're dealing with a lot of money, but you know, you could still treat everyone very nicely. And that's one of the reasons why he was also able to get referrals from people from within the industry and stuff like that. It, everyone's, he was very respectful. Another thing that I, I got was that from him is he treated every listing like it was the top. Now, every listing he took at the time that I met him again was, you know, million dollar plus listing, fairly nice homes. But I'll tell you what, it, 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 when he got a listing, it didn't matter. It was, oh, the open houses were pristine. I mean, sometimes they were nighttime open houses with cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and things like that the pictures were always super professional top-notch photos he was doing aerial stuff before people were doing aerial stuff um i mean hit he was sending this stuff out on his own he would send this out to like international magazines send like these really ritzy publications he treated every listing the Taj Mahal and sellers just thought it was the on earth. You know, you would never see him with just a standard basic flyer. He paid for custom stuff. You know, it was every listing was they, they got the full experience. And I remember asking him one time because he got a listing at this point when I met him, the market was pretty good. So, you know, I mean, homes weren't selling as fast as they are now, but the market was, was selling. And the, the home was already in really good condition. It was priced well. And he, I remember him saying, he's like, yeah, this one's going to sell pretty quickly. And he was still going through all the stuff. And I said, well, if you, if you think it's going to sell so quickly, why are you putting in all this money? Why are you putting in all this effort? And, he's, and his mentality was just because it's going to sell quickly doesn't mean they shouldn't get the A-plus experience, you know? It's not about the sale. It's about the experience of working with me. And he just treated every listing that way. And the sellers appreciated it. And, that, and that's why I, that's one of the reasons where I get it from, where I tell some of you is that just because the home's going to sell in three, four, five days, doesn't mean you shouldn't have a professional photographer. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do Matterport 3D. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do XXX next, go the extra mile because it's not just about that listing, it's about the next listing. It's about the referral from that, that seller. It's about the neighbors seeing all the stuff you're doing for that seller. He really had that mentality and, and it was nice. And I, I'll tell you, if, if you really, if he had a couple, three, four, $5 million listings, I've been to multiple open houses and I'm sure some of you have as well. Or the nighttime ones with the cocktails and stuff like that. They weren't like his. It, it, this guy hired professional parkers, valets, coat check people. I mean, the hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, um, waiters, the waitresses. I mean, he went all out for these super duper, um, if, you know, multi million dollar home open houses. It was it was pretty intense. So.
pretty cool. Pretty cool guy to learn from. Pretty cool guy to learn from. So who are we going to learn from today, Robert? What's that? What was the question? But you said that we're going to interview agents in the office. Oh, well, so this is kind of an open forum today. So I was really going to kind of turn it over to you all to see if you, what questions you can either ask me questions, you can ask other agents questions. I don't know if the other answer, you're more than welcome to ask one that's on the, the screen or anything like that. You know, we can just kind of do an agent round table and things along those lines. I mean, you hear from me all the time I, and I can keep going, but you know, what questions do you have for me or maybe any of the agents on the screen and that might be willing to participate is kind of how I'd like to do this today. Or is Yvonne on the line? Yvonne, are you there? No. I see her name on there, but I don't see her picture. All right. I see Yvonne, like, I hear her door knocking and really digging for that listing opportunity mm -hmm. every morning. And when she shares about her, what she's doing, I really, I really admire that. I agree. I agree. Yvonne, are you there? Or are you driving or doing something? Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm okay. sorry. Jamila has a I, question. I didn't hear my name. Jamila has a question Whoa. for you. Okay, and what's the question? Yvonne, what's your what's your mindset routine? Like what do you do to say, you know what, today I gotta get that list a listing? Oh my mindset is you know interesting or believe it or not, all the listing appointments I went in the last six months, every one of them I got it. There was no exception. But I didn't even I only won. Most of them I didn't even know. I do not. I, I know them. But right, right. I think the main reason was, you know, you had the mindset, you know the neighborhood, you know the market stats, you are the best agent, and you're there to take the leasing. You assume you're going to take it, not just go on appointment. So I did just one full-blown leasing, uh, leasing presentation. The rest of it, I, I did all the five states. You know, I pre-qualify them very strong and send the listing package. And uh, when I went there, I was very energetic, enthusiastic, put a big smile. Just don't be afraid of asking them to sign. So it sounds to me on that of Sorry, I could not hear oh, you it. well. I was driving to my appointment. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead, talk. That's all I could say. But right. just uh, just uh, assume you're, you're there to take the leasing. You're not just there to go on appointment for the appointment's sake. And, of course, you know, dress very professionally and everything down. I knew when I was in the office prospecting, I was very casual, but when I go appointment, I'm, I'm all on, you know, everything, you know, clothes, hair, jewelry, and makeup, everything, all is down. So. So, Yvonne, do you ever have days that you're like, you know what, I don't feel like getting rejected 50 times a day. Do you, what do you tell yourself to say, you know what, that's not how I'm supposed to talk to myself. Or, I mean, like, what do you do when you're? I knew. I, I knew. I always tell myself, you know, I will never take a no when the yes oh, is right. still possible. I will never take a no when the yes is still possible. I'm the greatest listening agent. My smile is right. my sacred open weapon. People trust me. People like me. People will leave their home with me. Uh, you know, I, I just keep saying that to myself. So. I'm I'm on that 5 a.m. club every day. We exercise from 5 to 6 a.m. We do, uh, you know, 30 minutes cardio and and the yoga and affirmation, meditation, all done in one hour. And that helps too. Those are all my favorite agents. 
if you're interested, I can give you the link. You can join us. Yes, Ivan. I'll check. I'll send you a text message. Thank you. Sure, sure. Of course. Thank you for asking this question. I, I, I have. I'm fired up lately because um, right now I have six in escrow, and uh, my other listing. I'm trying to double end it. That's what I'm trying to do, and then I have to fill up my pipeline. You know. Okay. Thank you. So Yvonne, really quickly before you go, I have a thing, you know, I know that it's crazy, but I have a thing that my accent, my Spanish accent is too strong sometimes on the phone. What do you, how do you overturn that, that accent? I'm I think that. What did you say? Like for me, I, I sometimes when I'm prospecting, I think that my, my Spanish accent is too strong. And so how do you overturn that? Oh, no, your English is perfect. Your Spanish, I never heard of it. Uh, when I speak English, I have strong accent. You know, Sichuan dialect is my first language. Mandarin is my second language. English is my third language. So don't even think about your accent. Just just think you're there to sell their homes. You know, get the best deal for them. For the, you know, for the seller, you're getting the top dollar for them. For the buyer, you're getting the best deal for them. You're the best agent. Who cares about your accent? Nobody told me I have a strong accent. I'm not qualified to sell their home or whatever. You know, have a accent actually is a benefit because they know you speak two languages. You have more potential buyers or sellers, whatever. <laughs> more clients. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you. That's, a, Thank that's you. a really great thought. That last one is that, you know, actually when they know when they have it, when I have an accent, they know it's a benefit because they speak multiple languages. I agree a hundred percent. That's a, that's a really powerful thought right there. Yeah. There. That makes, that empowered me, make me feel good. Not because I have accent. I feel bad about it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a really great thought right there very good very good you know Thank there's you know and, 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 and Yvonne's a great testament to that I mean she really does have that just great energy great positivity um I mean Yvonne and I coaching call is at you know 7 20 in the morning you know some of you aren't up yet <laughs> and you know she's already exercised and and all these other different things and she always answers the phone with great energy great enthusiasm ready to just tackle the day and uh i think it's really cool that, that is a great great thought on the accent because i think a lot of people probably feel the same way you know um different things very cool Rob hey robert robert, robert, I got a, robert i got a question uh uh to yvonne she said that you know she, she's awesome she got a lot of energy and positivity. I'm going to ask her all the escrows that she got at the business. What is the, in general, as majority people from, uh, you know, China, Mandarins, or they are all, you know, mixed. What is the majority of the percentage of your business come from? Actually, all here. Everybody, every seller here is here, not from China. Or oh, some of them, oh, you know, oh, no, no. you know, no, I understand. It's no, I'm here. just saying that you, the client from here, they are Chinese or what do you know? What can the client tell? Oh, actually, I would say, let's see, um, Chinese, Chinese, only 20, 30 percent are Chinese. All local people here, American, you know, Caucasian, native, Mexican, um, Chinese here. Korean, nice. yeah, all kinds, all kinds of people, yeah. Now, uh, Robert, just saying what, what you were saying, you know, when we go to a doctor or a dentist right here in America, especially, you know, like me, I'm going to the oncologist or you're going to the dentist, you see all these professionals, they are, maybe they have the last name, they are not from here, and you trust them, you think they are at the top of the line and you go, Mr. Lee for, you know, for your dentist or somebody else for a different speciality, and that's why you respect them. So the, the fact that you speak different language, I respect them more because you got being recommended because they're the top professionals in their in whatever they do. I agree. I agree. Look at um, I'm not going to Dr. McConnell. Hello. 
<laughs> Hello, Rio. How are you? All right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, Michael, it's, it's a great point. You know, there's um, there there is that that theory. Um, there's a book out there. I know I'm not supposed to be promoting him, but there's a book out there by Brian Buffini, and, and it's called The Immigrant Edge. And and you know, because he was an immigrant from Ireland, and you know, came here and he's obviously done very well for himself. But there's a whole thought behind that of the, um, you know, when you're an immigrant, either you're an immigrant or your family's an immigrant, you speak multiple languages, things like that, that you do work a little bit harder. You do give a little extra to move up the chains. And to Michael's point, I agree. It's a lot of respect for that, for doing those types of things. You know, it's the, there's a, there's a, it's not a meme, I guess, but there's a, I saw a picture one time of, you know, people on the streets looking for money and they show, you know, um, uh, American and he's just got a, he's just got a little, little pot bucket, whatever, you know, just asking for money. Meanwhile, there's some, you know, there's Mexican from assuming from Mexico who's out there trying to sell flowers and fruit, you know, and it's just the different mentality of the immigrants, you know, that, that, that could help that for in some, a lot of cases that is the case. So very, very interesting stuff. I got to tell you, and I agree with Neil hundred percent. I can't imagine trying to learn a new language and taking a real estate license test. I, I just, I couldn't imagine doing it. Okay. okay? I mean, I, I was not, I'm, I barely speak English well. So, you know, I can't imagine learning a whole different thing. Good stuff. Robert, you had mentioned that you're, you have a coaching call with um, Yvonne at 720. Today I was on the Zoom at, I think it was 720. And I just saw like the huge smile that you had on your face. And I was thinking, I wish I had that, that, you know, happiness so early. You know, what do you, what do you tell yourself in the morning about that? Like, well, Oh, well, you also have to understand by 7.20, I've been up for almost four hours. My, my alarm goes off at 3.30. Oh, 3.30. So, so by 7.20 in the morning, I, I, I'm already up, ready to go, rocking and rolling in the day. You know, I, I get this question a lot, Camilla, about what keeps me excited and energetic throughout the day because I am typically smiling a lot and things along those lines. I, I tend to, it's very Hallmark movie-ish. You know, the look at things, but it's I tend to look at things from a totally different mindset. I live, you know, I live exactly where I want to live, which is Los Angeles. Well, Robert, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Well, I could live anywhere in the world, not because I'm filthy rich, but because transportation allows me to get to wherever I want to go. I choose to live in Los Angeles. So I live, I I wake up every single day in the city I want to live in. I have beautiful weather constantly. Okay. So I don't have to worry about tornadoes or volcanoes or anything along those lines. I live in a country that provides me with nothing but opportunities. Is it perfect? God, no. But it provides me with a lot of opportunities. I somehow convinced a woman that's completely out of my league to marry me. So I went out, but that helps me wake up in the morning. And I have three dogs that despite the fact that they're a giant pain in the ass moment, they absolutely adore me. So look at life from that particular perspective. And I, I know that I don't have to, I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. I don't worry about money, but that's all because I earned it. So I, I look at all those different aspects every morning. I have no reason not to have a space. Now, some be in that position of like, why? I am living paycheck to paycheck. I, I am not finding, I don't have financial situation. Uh, that may be true, but you still wake up in a city, in an area, in a country, in an environment that should provide you nothing else. I mean, there are a lot of places that when you wake up, they're not very happy places, you know, but in California, pretty good living. Were you always like this? Were you always like always. this or just self-taught? Always. always, always. That's or that's genetic because my dad would not allow me to be in the house. 
wasn't going to tolerate it. If I was complaining about anything, that was, that was not okay. And it could have been the most basic thing. I could have been complaining about, you know, struggling in little league or something like that. It was not okay to be negative and complaining. It just wasn't. Uh, so he was the one, I, I say this sometimes on calls or things like that, you know, the law of average. My dad was always like that. If I was just negative and having a crappy thing, my dad would always tell me, well, law of average, that just means you got good stuff coming. Tell me that all the time. He just did not allow negativity. So I was inherited that from a very young age um, and kind of went from there. But because of that, because I had that mindset, I also don't surround myself with that. I haven't, I have a aunts, uncles, cousins, I haven't seen in 20 years because at one point being home from Thanksgiving, I was 12 years old. I'll never forget this. 12 years old, we were driving home from Thanksgiving. I told my parents, I'm never going to another family event. This is too depressing. And my dad said, okay. And I haven't seen a number of my cousins, aunts, uncles, since then, that was a long time ago, decades ago. So I choose not to surround myself with that people. I had, you know, um, my brother and sister weren't even invited to my wedding because I, they're just too negative for me. So when you don't surround yourself with that negativity, you're, you allow yourself to wake up more positive and more energy on a daily basis. And I don't have any negativity around me. I just won't tolerate it. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're family, blood, friends for years. I don't care. I, I just won't tolerate it. Good question. All right. What, uh, what else what questions do you have for me? What other questions do you have for agents on the board here? Might be willing to answer doing a little open form. Those some, Jamil, those were good questions for myself. Good questions for Yvonne. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, what else do we got going on here? All right. Let me pick on some, let me pick on some people. Hey, Abigail, are you there? Yeah. Abigail? Yes. Let me ask you a question. Sure. So you have a very, very strong determination to make money. You have goals of buying income properties. You have goals of doing things. What, how do you constantly remind yourself of the goals that you have set? Because I know I know this from you, but it's probably from everyone. There are days that you don't want to quote, go prospect. Is that safe to say? That is safe to say. Um, so how do you do that? How do you, for someone like yourself, that's very successful, but you have very, very goals. How do you stay focused on those goals every day? Well, first I do have to correct you. It's very difficult for me because I have a lot of things going on in my life and I don't want to pull that, <laughs> I don't want to go down that list, but um, sometimes it's very difficult. It's, it's very difficult. And uh, sometimes you doubt yourself. I doubt myself every morning when I wake up in the morning, I have to, you know, sometimes I don't want to get up in the morning because I've been woken up at two or 3 a.m. in the morning or 4 a.m. in the morning. And I don't have the strength or the stamina to, you know, you know, I don't want to be soft opera, but yet sometimes things, events happen in my life and, uh, you know, you just have to go on with it, you know, it just, but uh, the only thing I'm not driven by uh, money. That's one thing. I like money, <laughs> but I'm not driven by it. I think the one thing that I'm driven by is, uh, uh, knowing the fact that, you know, my mother's on dialysis and if all of a sudden the government says, Hey, listen, we can't keep her plugged in. Then I have to step in and, and cuff up that money. So I do want to have income property. I do. It's not that I like, like to grind. So just so you know. Um, oh, I know you don't. Yeah, no. But that's not, that's not an Abigail thing. That's an everybody thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but that's, but that's my point is that I think a lot of people struggle with doing the grind every day. 
you have big goals and you have stuff going on and yet you do the grind every day. So, you know, what is it, if it's not the money, what is it that keeps you going every day with all the stuff that you have going on and not wanting to do it every day? You just have to psych yourself out. You just, when you wake up in the morning, you have to, you know, sometimes you have to drag yourself out of bed. I've, I, we have shared this with you, Robert. I'm, I've, I'm constantly asking you, how do you do it? How do you do it? Um, you just have to drag yourself out of bed, put the makeup on, put the clothes on. I mean, just get up and do it. Turn on the computer and know that everybody, you know, is doing the same thing that you're doing. I think that's the major thing. Uh, the one thing that I do see, I, I do see myself, I, I joke about farmland and stuff like that, but I, I do see myself in a nice rocking chair in the middle of nowhere, looking at the stars and hearing, I don't know, a cow in the background. Um, I can't tell you how much that does not interest me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's like, really I, not I, I can't express to you enough how uninterested that that seems to be <laughs> you don't want to know my, what my thoughts oh, are Let me tell you. but um that's, that's it funny. that's you know you have to do it and, and neil pushing you you know being here you're you know you're being here and everyone's here you know some folks are dressed up they're ready to go and you know i see nancy she comes here once in a while um i see other folks coming in and out and you know, Brenda, she's always here. She's always working. She's always asking me, how are you doing? Is everything okay? You know, we're closing this one. She shows me the you know closing check and she's like, you're going to get this closing check. So just things like that. They motivate me. They drive, you know, and my husband, I'm very competitive. My husband keeps earning more and more and he keeps saying, hey, quit. You can quit. And I don't want to quit. I don't want to stay home. I just don't. No, that's not, you're not built for that. No no except for that rocking chair at the end of it well you'll get there you'll get you'll get to the rocking chair but you're you're not you're not built for that yet you'll go crazy yeah. at some point you'll get to that rocking chair and be like okay yeah i'm ready for this now yes that's cool thank you for sharing thank you for sharing Good yeah, absolutely job. that's cool yeah you just got to get up and do it every day but i like but to abigail's point is it's and it's kind of the same thing we were talking about earlier is surrounding yourself with people that are doing it. You know, they're, you know, she talks about Brenda's in the office every day, just, and Brenda, for those who don't know Brenda, she's a, she's a transaction coordinator for the company, but she also kind of is the admin in the Long Beach office. Brenda is always super positive, super energetic, super, Hey, how's it going? Very helpful in terms of all that you do putting yourself in, in places with the right people coming on here. Nancy Dupre, I don't, I don't think Nancy's on here right now. <clears throat> I asked Nancy Dupre this question at the end of the year when I, I said, you know, I you know, congratulate her on another year. And I said, you know, what is it with you? What, what do you attest this year to? I mean, all this craziness going on. And she said, I got to tell you, it's the people on Zoom. She said when she logs into Zoom and she sees all these people on here and she looks at the open mic and she sees all the people on the open mic, she said that's what got her through 2020. And still to this day, because she doesn't go to the office very often, it's being here with all of you is what keeps her going every day. And so, you know, it's you got to you got to take part. You know, you can go to the office and that's fine, but. You know, you have this virtual office where you can see people and hear people doing things. I, I got a call the other day. So Miguel Soler, who you, if you are, if you're ever on the office, you all see him. He doesn't work for the companies. He's in LA County, but he's not really in, a, in any of our marketplaces. He calls me and this is a guy that does, you know, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars in gross commission a year. He's got six kids. He doesn't work weekends. And he calls me the other day to say thanks to Neil and I for allowing him to be on. And he said this was the total kick in the butt that he needed to get himself back going because things were just not the way it was going for him and doing the open mic and hearing people like you and all this. And, you know, you, being around the, 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 the point is, is that being around people, whether it's physically in the office or virtually or at home or your own little groups or whatever it is. You just can't discount the power of that. You just can't. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Very good. 
Hey, Sonia Aldana, can you hear me? You can't hear me? I see her name. All right. I had a question for her that I thought would be very interesting. All right, what else? We got a couple minutes here. Anyone else? Questions for myself? Questions for anyone else here on this Zoom? Hi, Rob. I'm sorry. Hey, Sonia. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. Hey, I got a question for you. Yes. So you kind of were out of the business for a and and recently got back into it, right? Yes. Okay. That's correct. How many escrows have you, how many deals do you have closed and pending so far this year? Oh, um, if I remember correctly, uh, we just, because they keep closing. Uh, so I believe it, it's- Son of a bitch, total, <laughs> problems. <laughs> it's total- um, Seven closed. Seven. So seven closed and and some of them are very high price points. I mean, you just put a $3 million into escrow, yeah. right? Yes. So so let me ask you this. What, what is your one thing or two things, one or two things that you, you, you were kind of out of the business for a little bit and then you jump back into it and now you're having this success pretty rapidly. What, what's one or two keys to your success? Well, first, um, you know, <laughs> I started here in this office and this has been tremendous. It, I've, I've been in a total of two offices in, in, um, since I started, since I got my license. And three, three. But one, it was, you know, one of those offices that you just kind of hang your license and they don't help you at all. So... Um, because you don't pay anything. So, you know, so you get what you, you get what you pay for. So the, the, the mentoring from you guys, the availability in the coaching that, that we get and, um, uh, being around like-minded people, Jeanette is my mentor right now and she hustles. And so all I know is hustle. All I know is the hustle and, um, the mindset. So just waking up in the morning and saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work. Where's my next uh, listing coming from? Mm -hmm. um, and just hustle. We, I, that's basically, you know, surrounding yourself with the right people, uh, being in the right place and um, the mindset and the work. You got to put in the work. Yeah. So that's, that's what I feel like it's helping me and just staying focused and um, meditating in the morning and affirmations that has really helped me a lot. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Very cool. Very cool. Cause you, you're doing, you're doing a great job. And I think that's a lot of people, you know, we have a lot of agents for the company. You're not again, a newer licensee, but um, we have agents that are newer licensees or maybe just kind of shifting into a full-time basis or, you know, maybe just kind of starting their career over. So I think it's good to hear from someone like you, who's again, not, you're not a new licensee or really starting mm -hmm. over, but just getting back into it and saying, all right, I can do this. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, Sonia, can you describe that hustle mentality? Because you know, everybody says hustle, but can you be a little bit more in depth? I do see Jeanette mm -hmm. prospecting and when she does an open mic and I like to hear that. That's actually what got me into the company Learn, um, and not afraid of prospecting. When I first started hearing Jeanette mm -hmm. um, prospecting, and I said, oh, you don't have to be perfect at this. You just got to do it. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I you know, um, they say that... Um, what is it called? I all tide. What is it? All ties rises all high ties rises all ships. So that's basically how I feel. Um, when Jeanette got a listing in Newport, um, I I had she already had the listing. I came in, but I took ownership of it and I pretended this is my listing. This is my area, and um, so I felt like I I I built that confidence 
based on that listing, um, I was showing the property and a neighbor came in um, and the nicest guy, because I, the guy didn't buy that property, but I got a, a, a listing all the way to Woodland Hills. It's a, a dental office for 1.6. So um, that took me to that listing. So you, you have to, you, and say what you're saying about mentality. Um, and, and, you know, I, I read, I read books. I, I, you, I, I have that because I need that. Um, and based on what I, you, you, whatever you think you're going to attract. And that's what I, I always tell myself. If you start uh, doubting yourself, oh my God, I'm newer agent. I have my license since 2006, but then I stopped for 10 years because I opened up a gym. I thought I was going to do more money, make more money. Then this whole pandemic happened and it turned out that now I'm back to, 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 um, to real estate and I still have my gym, but um, it's like you attract, you attract that. So when I came in, I'm like, Oh, Jeanette, you know, she's a bull. We, everybody calls her the bulldog because she is a bulldog. She's like, go get her. And I want to be that bulldog, you know? And so I see her, I see how she handles things. I see how she's on the phone. And when I get on the phone now, I used to be afraid of calling those million dollar listings. I was, I still get nervous, but now because I had that experience in Newport, I'm not nervous anymore because I'm like, no, this is, this, I, this is easy. This is what I do. So mentally you have to self-talk, you know, and say, um, even though I haven't been, I stopped for 10 years. Um, I, I know that, that I'm in, in the right place and the knowledge. And if I don't know something, I'm going to ask. And I, I, Robert, you know, Neil, uh, Patricia's my coach, uh, Patty, Patty's my coach. And so I know I have the support that when I need something, I, I get it right away. And then Cindy, she's great too. Abigail, did you have a question? Sorry, I, cut, I think I cut you off. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you, Sonia, for, Thank for you. sharing. Very cool. Thank you, Very Sonia. Cool. Thank you, Sonia. You're Thank the you. best. All right, cool, 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 cool. Well, look, what, what I got out of this, hearing from some of you, it, that some of the commonalities that I got were you have to have the right mindset. It starts with mindset. Mike Ferry talks about that all the time. I mean, Yvonne talked about the mindset that she knows that she's the best option, listing option for them. And her mindset is that when she goes to a listing appointment, she's only there to get a contract signed. That's her mindset. Sonia talked about having the mindset that she can do this and she can go out and she can get a multi-million dollar deal and things along those lines. You know, and we talked, and the other one of the other commonalities, again, is who you surround yourself with. I mean, Abigail talked about that being amongst the group. Um, Sonia talked about that with Jeanette and being amongst, you know, some of the other people in the office. So I, I think that's, you know, there's some common things here that people are doing and are having some success with. You, you have to have the mindset that you can do it. You just have to, even if you haven't done it yet, you, now, the good news is, if you haven't done it yet, that makes you a normal real estate agent. Because most real estate agents haven't done it. 50% of real estate agents don't close a deal a year. So, you, oh, gosh, I haven't done it yet, though, Robert. Yeah, well, neither does 50% of the other people you're dealing with. So, you, but you have to at least think, gosh, I can do it. You have to have the mentality that you can do it. But not only that you can do it, but that you can work with this price point. The Sonia thing with the price point, I, I got to tell you, I, I'll be completely honest with you, okay? And we'll wrap this up here because I know we're way over. But I'll be completely honest with you. I told an agent the other day, I was so pissed the other day at an agent the other day, I told her that, that she should leave the company. I did. And the reason I was pissed is because she was complaining about, well, Century 21 just can't get, you know, big deals. I, I'm a... I'm not very patient, but I'm fairly patient. I can't tolerate that because I've heard that stuff from people for years. And I see people getting multi-million dollar deals every day in the company. So when you say, oh, well, we can't century 21 this, yeah, you know what? Your mindset is so weak and you've got so many damn excuses. I don't want to be around you. Go work somewhere else. I told that to somebody the other day. They haven't left yet, but I'll be honest. I was, I was not okay with that. So you have to have the mindset, not only that you can 
to do it, but I can take that price point. I can work with that person. I can, I have an accent, but I, you know, that doesn't matter. I can use it as an advantage. The mindset that you can do it is a really, really key thing. That's where it starts. And then surrounding yourself with the right people as much as you can, whether it's in person or on virtual or little chat groups, whatever. It, that's the key commonality we've heard from, from some of these things here today, which is funny because no one really talked about, well, I practice scripts every day or I prospect every day. It starts with mindset and who you surround yourself with. And sometimes those interact. So very, very cool stuff. And Robert, sure. isn't, isn't yes. it the eight activities that we have that script in the morning, remember? Yeah. It's not the companies, the agents' activities that actually, you know, will get the home sold. So interesting. True. It's true. Robert. And I tell you, I tell you, I'm actually going to put together a list of all the, the million dollar homes, but I time, I could go to the hot list right now. And I mean, Sonia just talked about it. And actually that's the second because you they've got two Newport properties that are over $3 million. May does almost every deal in South Pasadena is over a million dollars. The Scalios have a $6.9 million listing, just closed a $4.5 million house. August has two closings above $6 million year to date. Um, we have Mark and Al do multi homes all the time. I mean, we, we do this all the time. Now we don't do it in Beverly Hills because we don't have any offices in Beverly Hills. So you're right, you know? may be true we don't have any not office we don't have any agents there but you know if if we decided hey we should open up an office in beverly hills which we never will because the rents there are ridiculous but if we did you could drop a century 21 agent in beverly hills and be just fine it, it just it's hey, a robert so thing. robert so our license allow us to sell a 10 million dollar listing that's not a problem right that is true michael that is true <laughs> that is true yes yes as long as, long as it's in the state of california Iris, what were you going to say? Well, then we'll wrap up. Yeah, I was going to say there was one agent in Acadia a few years ago, and he was uh, a centurion when he was uh, in Acadia office uh, in master, with masters. Mm -hmm. And then later on, because the agent left and saying that Century 21, people don't recognize Century 21 for high-end listing. That's why he left. And then and I, and I, I checked. And he, after he left, he doesn't really take an, he doesn't really take any listings. Yep. Yeah. That, that was a very, very sad, sad story. And I know exactly who you're talking about, but they did, they left. And when you, you know who I'm talking about, what, you know, do you, you, you know, I know who exactly who you're talking about. I, I know exactly. Who you're talking about. Um, that's it. But that's why they left. They, he left, he left because he didn't think they could, he wanted to do the high-end deals in Arcadia and Pasadena, and he didn't think we could do it. And so he left, and not only is he not doing the high-end deals, he's also not doing the $600,000, $800,000 deals either. So um, look, it, I, I, I say this all the time, selling a multi-million dollar property is as much of a mindset as it is a skill. And it's just the way it is. So I can tolerate certain things, but that I'm just, I'm not okay with. So very, very cool stuff. Well, look, thank you so much for sharing. I thought this was kind of neat, something a little different than me just rambling on for 45 minutes, although I did kind of take up the bowl conversation. Um, still, still pretty impressive. But I, I appreciate everyone for sharing. Jamila, great questions. Yvonne for sharing. Abigail, Sonia, Iris, um, everyone kind of participating a little bit. I think it's good sometimes to hear from, from what you're doing and what are the successes you're doing on a daily basis. Um, because you're doing great, you know, we, you're crushing the competition. I think it's good to hear what some of you are doing and coming from different perspectives. So very, very cool stuff. All right. Well, good job, everybody. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So we're